Hi, welcome to Box on a Box Rock and Celluloid, Bot Brack for short, I'm over Box. So I thought I'd just do a little rundown of uh, my fave albums of 2023. To be honest with you, not uh, many to pick from this year, and it's more albums that I've reviewed on the channel, but just looking back over those, one album I didn't cover uh, was Fifth Angels, When Angels Kill, um, uh, which is kind of like a double concept album on Nuclear Blast, so Fifth Angel came back um, uh, with an album called The Third Secret, uh, which is pretty good, with uh, Kendall Birchall on vocals, no, Bichel, um, who was the guitarist uh, on their second album, they had a big long gap, so Ken Mary's back uh, in the band, and I forget who the other guitarist is called, but that's the only original members, they've changed singers since then, but I've gotten a really good young player whose name escapes me, um, but this is impressive, like just good American power metal, good production, really good drumming by Ken Mary, if people, people remember Ken Mary from his House of Lords, and um, uh, Alice Cooper days, He's still got it. Um, so yeah, you could question how Fifth Angel it is because it hasn't got James Bird or Ted Pilot on it, but a decent record, worth checking out. Uh, another one uh, was Last in Lines, Jericho. Um, I reviewed that on the channel earlier in the year. Um, this was interesting because uh, I thought the first Last in Line was, uh, was okay. The second one, it felt a bit drab. You know, it felt like they were producing new music so they could go out and play Dio stuff and, and playing songs that kind of fitted with that uh, vibe. But I thought this managed to step out from that and feel like Last in Line had a reason to be there beyond being able to go out and play Dio stuff, if I'm honest. Um, obviously, uh, I think Phil Susan, it was his first, second album, I think. Uh, excellent singing by uh, Andrew, his second name. Freeman and of course Finney Apache and Vivian Campbell and Sterling form really good guitar sound on this album. Good solos from Viv, the production was a notch up. Uh, and the songs just felt more consistent and stronger. So I'm, I'm looking forward to catching these guys on tour. Uh, and of course they've got more of their own songs to play now. And cherry pick what's great about those and of course do those Dio classics um, that we love. Um, Winger, seven album, always like Winger. Um, I like this album, I've got to say, I think when I reviewed it, uh, I kind of had it down as like a weak release from the band, I kind of gave it a 7 out of 10. Winger don't make bad records, they don't produce bad albums, and this was in keeping with that. Uh, but it's still lots of great stuff on it, particularly two singles uh, and other tracks dotted in there, so uh, I'll probably head back to it sometime soon, uh, dig into it again uh, and see where it, it, it lies. Um, but it's still a solid record, like I say. Uh, winger, don't make bad albums. Uh, another interesting new project band was um, Elegant Weapons, Richie Faulkner's band with Ronnie Romero, Rex and Pantera, and Scott Travis on drums. Um, they had to change the lineup for the live, few live dates they did, which I think were nine of them. Um, this was good, it differentiated itself from Judas Priest, it had more groove. Uh, Sort of late tracks in the six, eight time signature or twelve, eight with a triplet feel, um, kind of a little bit Sabbathy sort of groove. Uh, even Pantera, obviously Rex is on there. Um, I thought Ronnie Romero, uh, this was his best vocal performance I heard. I thought this suited him really well. He was able to put more aggression in, um, able to find a different set of gears in this. Uh, I just wish he didn't do so many bands. Obviously. It's impossible to do this band properly, really, because, you know, next year Richie Ford is going to be off kicking ass with Priest. Ronnie Romero has got other projects. Rex couldn't hear it because he's doing Pantera. But it's worth checking out this album. Uh, a strong record, generally from start to finish, uh, with some excellent songwriting and playing. Um, really good. Extreme 6 album. I wouldn't say I was disappointed with this because I kind of pulled away from Extreme many years ago. My take on this album was if you're an Extreme fan, uh, you'd probably really, really like it, love it. If you weren't an Extreme fan, or you have been a fan, there were still things you like there. Um, I think that the singles and the four sort of tracks are released on YouTube with the kind of pick of the bunch. I think for me, it was a little too eclectic. They maybe should have focused. Uh, although Extreme have always been eclectic, it, it may have benefited from just narrowing its vision a bit more. Um, I think there was issues with production, the drums are heavily compressed. Uh, a friend of mine who engineers wasn't too impressed with the production and uh, you felt the guitars were a bit fizzy. Um, but still a strong comeback record, Extreme, they've had great uh, reviews live. And of course Nuno, still absolutely able to bring his A-game. 
um, Primal Fear Co. Red, uh, was it Primal Fear's 14th, 15th album? I thought this was an improvement on uh, Metal Commandos and certainly as good or maybe better than Apocalypse. So not one of the better Primal Fear albums, but not one of the worst ones. Uh, a solid effort with some really excellent production and some really good songs on it. Um, if you like Primal Fear, it's worth checking out. If you want to check out some good power metal, uh, German, European power metal, go for it. KK's Priest, The Sinner Rides again. Again, I found a lot of things to not en enjoy in this, but there was things to enjoy. I do think it's better than the, uh, the Sermons of the Sinner. Um, I think they're heading the right way. Kind of like the last in line, the, the KK's Priest exists to go out and play, to turn and play Judas Priest tracks. That's what I've done albums, is to kind of justify that. So... Uh, it's the mechanism by which KK can go out and tour, really, and he's got something to promote and tie in with that. Um, but I think uh, there was an improvement on this improvement in the choruses, improvement in the production. I think the third KK's Priest album, they're able to take more time over it now they're establishing themselves and establishing themselves in the live realm. So I think uh, the third time will be the charm, and uh, I think it will legitimize things more. I personally think KK has got, they've totally got the right to go out and play much Judas Priest or songs uh, he's done as he likes. I prefer if the band was God Cage with Priest. I prefer if there wasn't as many Priest references. One or two is fine. But at the end of the day, he's got the right to do that. And the Fedora hat's back uh, if you're a Sad Wings fan. Um, yeah, so that's what, what I thought I'd do is just pick my three three albums that really stood out as excellent releases. Um, my first is Mammoth 2, the second uh, Wolfgang Van Halen Mammoth album. This is a really strong record. Uh, benefit from having less tracks than the first album, 10 tracks. All all strong, maybe a couple of fillers. It was an eight out of 10, excellent production. Um, uh, benefited from having a full band. Um, uh, guitar sound was excellent. Um, Wolfgang did a lovely, uh, some lovely lead breaks and he, he did that lovely kind of long solo, did some kind of tapping, which was a lovely tribute to his dad. His vocals were excellent. Um, a little more rocky, sort of hard rock, uh, moving a little bit away from the sort of more emo influence of the first album. This is a strong record. This guy's here to stay. Um, I hope he takes some time out to kind of uh, do a bit of work on the Van Halen archives. Um, but um, like, uh, it's interesting. A lot of it's a second albums here, isn't there? Um, you know, you've got the Mammoth Two, you've got the K Second KK album, the third Last in Line. You know, it's. Uh, bands that are just early into their recording process in, in a way is the extreme one as well and there's another massive gap from their previous album so maybe extreme need to you know get an album out fairly sharpish but mammoth 2 a really really very good record um my next album uh, is an album i didn't review um i nearly did it's kingdom of illusion by stardust so stardust not the dance act music feels better with you they're a hungarian melodic rock band on the frontiers label frontiers putting out way too much stuff but you know in amongst all the stuff they put out cream rises and this is one of them so their debut album i think it was their debut so they debut for for um uh, um a frontiers something with heaven in the title forgotten it but it was a good record it came out until the lockdown i really love some of the tracks um second hand love brilliant track but um just um you know uh kind of five or six really good tracks but the rest not doing it but those tracks strong this is more consistent um the couple of singles particularly the second one had a nice giant vibe um uh losing me is it called very kind of like um save me tonight or chains um I really like the singer. He's got a really nice melodic voice. Obviously, it was by Joe Elliott. But, you know, nice kind of classic rock feel, but a bit pop metal. And the, all the band, the production's excellent. And the guitarist very good. He plays really nice, gets a tight rim sound. He's got a strong vibrato, melodic taste, chops. Uh, you know, this band are cut above, uh, the, you know, the, the other melodic rock bands out there. You know, they're, they're, they're up there or getting into the uh, lexicon of bands like Eclipse or Heat, um, uh, Wet, you know, for me, uh, work of art, that kind of that kind of level, uh, really good. So I'm looking forward to what they continue to do. So my favorite album of the year uh, was Uriah Heap's Chaos and Color. Um, uh, this is absolutely one of the best albums the band's done, certainly in the top five or six releases. Some people are putting as high as like three, 
Um, you know, it's one of those arms it could go up. Your abs are great advert for keeping a name going, keeping the, the, the sound integrity of the band, but bringing in fresh members that can in, inject more. There's this problem with music is people want the, the old lineup. Well, you're right, it's one of those bands, there's never going to be the classic lineup because three or four of them are dead, basically. Uh, and obviously, two of them uh, for a long time. But, uh, you know, you've got a singer who's been there 35, is it 36, 37 years, um, and the keyboard player as well. So they've been there longer than, you know, th those classic members. Uh, the drummer's already been there 15 years. He's superb, one of the best rock drummers I've seen in life. And the bass player is excellent, David Rimmer, and he's done a couple of albums. So, you know, when somebody's where a member's passed away or a member's left, Mick Boxer's bought in the right players to keep the sound and bring it forward. What this album really benefited from was getting the production right. Um, the production had been good on the previous records, but this was better. It had the right amount of polish. Um, the bass sound was stupendous. Um, it had all the Uriah Heap progginess, the harmonies, um, uh, some interesting lyrics. Uh, and it was just consistent from top to finish. Uh, and some moments on it were absolutely some of the best moments I've heard from the band. So this is easily my album of the year. And next year, we, you know, we get Saxon's new album, the first with Brian Tatler, another band who's changed lineup, has managed to keep going. Their new track sounds excellent. Of course, Judas Priest are coming back with the Invincible Shield album. And again, another classic band who's changed lineup over the years, but is producing by the sound of it some spectacular music. Okay, so that's, what, that's my little rundown of the albums of the year. Um, hopefully, maybe hopefully we'll get some more next year, dig our teeth in too. Cheers, thanks very much. Remember to share and subscribe. I'll see you again soon.